Good morning. We're in front of Heartland Lifestyle Center out here in beautiful Virginia in the springtime. And today I'm with Colin and I'm with Debbie and we're going to talk about gratitude and what that means and how to be grateful in every situation. We know with the COVID crisis, a lot of things are happening. People staying at home, maybe their finances are being affected or their home life is affected because of this. But we just want to encourage everyone to have a spirit of being grateful. Find something to be thankful for. I have two scriptures that I would like to um, share with you all. And the first one is found in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18. And it says, Rejoice evermore in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The other verse is in the Old Testament, and it's in 1 Chronicles 16, 34. And it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I really love that, how God's mercies endure forever. And there is a golden string of his love in every circumstance. It just takes us to train our minds to look for them, and that will give us a spirit of gratitude. I have a little acronym that I've made up for grateful, and I want to share it with you. The G means find gratitude in everything. In other words, have an attitude of gratitude. R, rest in the promises of God. They're a wonderful platform. They never change because God does not lie. And whatever he says, he's more than able to do. A, acknowledge God that he is in control of everything. And whatever happens to us, it's been weighed in the balances of heaven and he'll give us the strength that to go through. When we not A, A for acknowledgement, then we can go to T, trust in God at all times. E is for expect the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I first had expect nothing, but I think we're supposed to expect something. So expect the best, that things will work out as they should according to the will of God. And whether or not it feels like the best or not, that's not, the, that, that's not the really the problem. The situation is that if we're close to God, whatever's happening is the best for that situation. F, find the blessing in every situation. You in gratefulness understand that you are loved by God. And remember, First Chronicles, his mercies endure forever. And last but not least, learn to lean on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. They're stable, unmovable, and his arms are open wide for each one of us, full of love and care. So now we'll go to Colin as she shares some experiences and some science and information about gratitude. <laughs> Good morning. When I was a little girl, <clears throat> My grandmother always sang this song. I'm not going to sing it because I cannot sing, but it goes like this. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Amen. And that is a song that has always been in my heart. Whenever I feel like I'm not that grateful, when I feel like... The world is coming down upon my shoulders, or I'm sad, or I feel depressed and anxious. I remember my grandmother singing that song, and then it just brings joy to my life, and then I'm a little bit more grateful. Now, there are some studies, as Ms. Bully said, that have found that being grateful or showing gratitude increases your brain's ability to release your happy hormones, which are your serotonin and your dopamine, which gives you that feel good. So when you're grateful, even though you're not feeling grateful, but being grateful helps you to be a happier you, a happier person. But I want to share a verse with you today from Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 to 7. And it goes like this. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now listen to this. 
Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And here is the most amazing part about this verse, a blessing, a promise from God. It says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep, guess what it keeps? It shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. Now, isn't that so amazing? Paul is saying through God, God is saying through Paul, be happy in everything. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. Don't be anxious. But if you're going through trials and tribulations, come to God with prayer and make your requests known to Him in thanksgiving. And when you do that, God will give you the peace that passes all understanding. He will keep your heart, He will keep your mind, and you will not suffer from depression or anxiety or fear, but you will have that blessed peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now Debbie will share a little bit more. Well, gratefulness is such a blessing when we put it into practice. And I've been thinking on that verse that says, whatever we think, that's what we become, basically. Mm -hmm. And so our thoughts are super powerful. And I just want to share basically how gratefulness has impacted my personal life and some things I've put into practice. A few years ago, I was actually looking for answers, looking for meaning in my life. And I was like, Lord, just help me to see the importance. And I read this testimony from a lady that she went through a very traumatic life event. Her little sister was killed in a horrible accident. Her mom ended up in a mental health hospital, dad with depression, and she grew up as a little girl and teenager with depression. And so she was really um, suffering from anxiety, fear, depressed, because, I mean, you could imagine how much certain situations can impact your life. But one day a friend said, you know, Anne, give you a dare to write a thousand things, gifts, things you're grateful for. And she was like, a thousand? <laughs> like, um, that's like too much to ask. But she started that dare. She took it. And every day she would write things as simple as the wind blowing on my hair, the birds singing, the, you know, just the bread I'm eating for breakfast with my jelly, um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or, and those little things she started, and after some time she noticed she was feeling so much better, the depression was not um, taking over, she was feeling happy, thankful, seeing God, not as that angry father um, treating her badly, but as a loving father caring for her, so I was like, okay, this is what I need to apply, so since then, I started a little journal like little notebook that I would write three things every day. You can write more, but three things in a year, you can get a thousand. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I also want to take that dare to write a thousand gifts. And when you're going to sleep, maybe the day was traumatic, challenging, whatever. Instead of focusing on all of that and chewing through that, like before you go to sleep, which can be hard to sleep well, mm -hmm. just focus on the good things that day and then you're going to be so much more peaceful grateful you cannot have anxiety and fear at the same time um like anxiety fear and gratefulness at the same time so that has been a blessing in my life and here at the lifestyle center we really encourage people and believe greatly in the power of our thoughts our belief to improve our health to bring us out of anxiety depression and be able to live a life with fullness and joy. So we pray that you can put this into practice in your life as well.